Hello. Hello, good morning. So, uh, who are you? My name is Jean-François Falaché and I'm the CEO of Orange. Congratulations. We have... Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we have several questions for you. Uh, the first one, the classic question that we put to all um, our guests is, how did you get here in this point in life? Um, you know, this is, uh, I would say, uh, a result of uh, my career. I mean, I started in uh, the telecom uh, as a young engineer in the, in the 90s, actually, where I spent uh, quite some time in our labs. Uh, then, uh, after being an engineer in the lab, I moved on to uh, a more or less a commercial position, uh, which might be seem a bit awkward as a, as a move, but I was uh, you know, looking to have more contacts with uh, customers and, and with people than I used to have as an engineer in, in, in the labs of R&D. And I liked it a lot. Um, I spent a few years in the commercial department. Uh, at that time in France, working for France Telecom, which was the telecom, which is actually today Orange and, and the, one of the major telecom operators in France. And um, at the end of the 90s, uh, I took, uh, let's say, quite a turn because I decided to uh, go and work abroad. So I uh, left France and uh, actually to join a, a startup, uh, a startup company, which at that time it was a company called Euronet Internet. It was a small company that started to provide internet access. If you remember well in the 90s, and 19, it was actually in 1999. I mean, this was really the start of internet. It was also a very specific period. I mean, uh, for all those of uh, you that are my age, they will for sure remember it. The younger one, they will not know, but it was the famous internet bubble. So it was an amazing period whereby um, Everything was possible, a lot of enthusiasm. I was working in Amsterdam in that company. And I stayed there um, quite some time because I spent six years in the Netherlands working for this startup that we brought from a very small company with uh, 50 colleagues into the first uh, challenger in the Netherlands. So when uh, actually I left the Netherlands, it, it was the second internet provider after the incumbent, I mean, uh, the first challenger to the incumbent. Um, it was called One of the Netherlands, and uh, that was a fantastic period because when you work in a startup, I mean, you really, you know, you touch all the, uh, the, the 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 things in the business. I mean, from sales to products to marketing to customers, you're you're involved in a lot of things. That was really really a great period. And then um, after this period uh, that I spent in the Netherlands, uh, six years, I I had the chance to come back to France and to lead a company which actually is a consulting company. So at that time, uh, I became the CEO of that company, uh, a company called Softrecom, which actually is a consulting company working for operators, telecom, advising telecom operators. And um, with one um, uh, very interesting, uh, let's say, uh, characteristic is that it's a company that does a lot of work abroad. Uh, so although it's, it's in France, it's a French company, it works a lot for operators abroad in Africa, in the Middle East, a little bit in Asia, a little bit as well in South America. So uh, during those five years I spent uh, leading this company, I mean, I really had the chance to uh, travel and to make business all across the world. Well, not in all the countries, but in a decent number of countries and discover, you know, rather than just uh, business, it was really an experience because this was a way to discover other cultures, other people, and uh, it was really, really one of the richest experiences in my life. And then uh, that's how I came uh, to Rumania uh, because I was uh, looking for the next challenge at some point. You know, in life, it's uh, when you feel you are too much comfortable in a job, not that you get bored because you never get bored as a CEO of a company, but when you feel that you are in your comfort zone and, and that you know it's rolling, that this is probably the moment you say, I need to change, I need to go to the next challenge. At least me, I need this, I need to find you know, new challenges, new energy. And um, I had the chance that the Orange Group uh, trusted me uh, to take the responsibility of Orange Romania which uh, here as well, I'm in this position for a little bit more than three years. It's, it's really a great chance because, I mean, I really like Romania. Romania for French people is a very specific country. There are so many people, I mean, speaking my language, speaking French, and um, the culture uh, of Romania is, is very close to uh, the French culture. And I'm someone coming from the south of France, so culturally, also very Latin part of, the, of, of my own country. and. Uh, so it feels very good to be here uh, in Romania, 
and especially to lead a company like Orange and Media. When you were a kid, uh, did you have a dream job? I don't know, a fireman, a CEO, a policeman? I don't remember or I don't believe when I was a kid, I was a, uh, when I was a small kid, probably I had these kind of dreams, but I, I don't really remember this. Um, what I can tell you is when I started working, um, I remember very well that I was very impatient. You know, uh, I wanted to do more very quickly. I wanted to do, especially when I was uh, working in my first job in the labs, I wanted, you know, I was quite impatient. I was very nervous to do more, to have more responsibilities. And I remember at that time, one of my uh, bosses, uh, which of course was an older guy than me, always told me, you know, Jean Francois, the best fruits are, are the ones that have the time to rip them. And I was saying, wow, he's an old guy, and, you know, what is this? And, uh, but I think he was right, uh, because in all the jobs I took, um, when I spent time in R&D, when I went and spent time in sales, I was very patient. I wanted immediately more. I was kind of frustrated, you know. Because, but the truth is that what I learned uh, in those jobs in the past uh, is very useful uh, now. I mean, uh, and that's, I think, uh, uh, something I, I remember very well. So, if you would give three advices to your younger self, what would be those advices? So, my first advice is uh, in your professional life, in, in your life in general, by the way, if you have the chance to find something where you really uh, enjoy what you are doing, where you are really enthusiastic, where do it, because this is um, there that you will be the best, this is there that you will accomplish yourself and this is there where you will succeed. And you know it's a virtuous uh, loop. I mean, when you enjoy what you do every day, when you are very enthusiastic, usually you do feel great things. So, it, and you know, believe me, it's, it's a, it's, this is a very strong advice. And I had the chance uh, to find jobs so far that I really enjoy, that I really, you know, I'm very enthusiastic. When I come in the office in the morning, I'm having a big smile on my face. And uh, sometimes it, makes, it means also, sorry, making choices. So it means also sometimes saying no uh, to things that are proposed to do that looks very nice, that are maybe very shiny, but where maybe you don't feel. Okay, and I don't want to sound too much pretentious because, of course, I mean, Sometimes you might have no choice, but when you have the choice and when you can find uh, a place where you are really uh, liking what you do, this is really the advice I would give. Go and do what you really feel doing, what you really like, and this is where you will accomplish yourself the most. Um, second advice, and maybe less for you, the young people there, but for people that are already in jobs where they are managing people, is um, get around you the best people. And it's not always very comfortable as a manager because usually the best people are people that will challenge you, uh, they will not always be nice to you, but uh, they will really help. They will, uh, and we are never as strong uh, as we are alone as with a team. A team is always stronger. So it's not always very comfortable, but you need to have sometimes the ability to get around you, people that are better than you, that are sharper eventually, and this is the way you will succeed. So that's, I would say, my my uh, second uh, advice. Um, maybe a third one, uh, and I'm big thinking of uh, your first question, how did you get here, uh, being the CEO of Orange Media? I think at some point in your career, you have to try to take risks, uh, to take different routes than other people uh, take, to differentiate in a way, uh, which is true in business, it's true as well for your personal situation. If you just, you know, follow the flow, uh, like many other people do, I mean, maybe uh, you should find a new ways, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, when I, a few years ago, when I decided to quit uh, France Telecom, uh, big company, uh, nice established job, and to go into a startup in the Netherlands, which was a small company of, uh, uh, it was, I think, 30, 40 people there, people say, what are you doing? Why? I mean, why are you doing this? But I really don't regret because this is one of the periods of my professional life where I learned the most. But at that time, it was a bit, you know, a crazy choice or a bit of, it was different. And I really don't regret this. And this is an advice I, I, I would like to give to the people that will listen. Take risks, make something different. 
of course, again, if you feel like you you will like it and you will uh, enjoy it, but take risk. Great advice. Um, what does it mean ethics to you? So, uh, to me personally and to this company, Orange Romania, uh, ethics is uh, absolutely key. I mean, you know that. I mean, we are running this company with a few values. I mean, at Orange, uh, uh, we are all together at a team. Uh, respecting a few values, they are being friendly, being straightforward and being honest. And uh, to me, ethics is absolutely key, personally, and as uh, a head, as uh, you know, being the CEO of a company. Uh, ethics is about not doing to others what you would like uh, others to do to you, or respecting others like you would like to be respected. So, we are very strong with this, uh, with this point in Romania, in other countries, in all the countries of Orange. Um, it's a key topic and we are really uh, not only uh, strong in thinking about ethics, but we are really communicating all across the company that there are a number of principles that are key. So, and ethics is one that we will not compromise. But apart from this, we are communicating this recurrently to our employees, but we are going further than this. We are regularly auditing ourselves, and uh, very recently we also are cert we, we got a certificate. I mean, there are specialized companies uh, in Europe that are coming, uh, checking on the way you work, on the way you control your processes, your internal processes in companies, and checking that basically you do the things right. So that's uh, actually at Orange Media what we do. Ethics is key, uh, and you know, one of the key in our business, in the telecom business, is our image. Uh, I mean, Orange is a brand that is a trusted brand. So, you know, all this is linked. I mean, uh, so again, ethics is at the core. You know, you are a technology guy, working in a technology company. And right now, the whole world, and it's a very technology world, what advices would you give to uh, people, younger or less younger, in order to use the technology properly? Because right now, for example, technology as entertainment is it, used in a very high degree, but technology in terms of education or in terms of, uh, um, let's say, useful things is not used as much as should be. What do you think about this? Uh, I'm very cautious to give advice to younger people about how to use technology because I think they probably would give us better advice than we could give them because usually um, younger people and I have uh, uh, I have kids myself they are uh, grown, grown up kids uh, more than 20 years old and when I look at how they use technology I think they are very advanced uh, compared to people from, from my generation. Uh, but you know, indeed, I mean, you, I, think, I personally believe we are uh, at this moment. I mean, in the last years and now, especially now, we are in the middle of a big revolution. But it's really a societal revolution, a bit like um, from the agriculture world to the industrial uh, world. From uh, you know, we are now um, our society is moving from the industrial world to a, what I call the digital revolution. And I think this is really changing profoundly the way we work, the way we live and uh, basically what we can do and it creates as you say a lot of opportunities and a lot of opportunities not only to learn but to do different businesses i mean look around us i mean look how many companies were absolutely not existing like 10 15 years ago i remember we were talking about the netherlands when i was in the netherlands one of my guys uh, in this small company was telling me look she also go there it's called google nobody knew about this they were having um, i don't know a thousand page views and they came with a new search engine that was so simple, so light, that it was quicker than the others. Look at what Google is today, for instance. So I think this digital revolution creates a lot of opportunities for a uh, youngster uh, to learn, but also to create businesses and to do things differently. And I wouldn't give advice, because I'm sure, I mean, there is a lot of richness out there in, in the youth. There are a lot of ideas. 
and you know they get very much and very quickly acquainted, acquainted with the technology. Uh, so I, mean, I would say, guys, use it. I mean, uh, uh, take it. I mean, make make it yours, and uh, I'm sure we will. Uh, I'm sure they will basically, and uh, it will create a lot of opportunities, even more than we see today. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.